Did you call? Did you call it Ob Studio? Yes. Is it not? OBS. No. OBS. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Don't. <laughs> 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 so it starts oh, yeah. and so it begins the humiliation of Kalimara. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Kalimara here and no, it's not calamari. Welcome back to my channel or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. Today we will be discussing a topic that I feel like I should probably have more shame in putting out there for people to relearn and witness when it has been and should have stayed peacefully buried and forgotten. This is very hard to explain because it literally came out of nowhere and is very embarrassing to admit. I'll explain more further along the video, but basically the premise of what we're doing here today is that when I was 13, I wrote a Rise of the Guardian fanfiction, and it was a self-insert paired with Jack Frost written in first person. Yes, I will do this for you, my lovely viewers. I am unearthing this shameful, cringe-inducing piece of my past for your entertainment and my suffering. You know, since chapter 1 of Wild World came out, I've seen so many people saying that Kirana, the character we focus on in that chapter, is a self-insert. But after this video, I think you'll probably change your mind. Because I will be showing you what a real self-insert of me looks like. And not only that, I've also recruited voice actors from my Wild World series to voice the characters in my fanfiction. It is turning into a full production, people. You know, I don't know of anyone else who is insane enough to do a live reading of their cringy fanfiction they wrote 10 years ago and hiring actual voice actors to voice and commentate on it simply because I can and this is how I choose to use my platform. Only I am unhinged and mentally unwell enough to do something like this. So subscribe, please because I'll need it. And before you ask, yes, this fanfiction is still available on fanfiction.net and the character in the cover art was my self-insert OC, Daydream. Here's the full picture. Ew. And if you think my anatomy is bad now, well, I don't think I've changed much there. <laughs> now for some disclosure, I have left everything exactly as it is. No edits, no going back and changing things, which is evidenced by the updated status here. And for a taste of the sheer edginess and cringe that my 13 to 14 year old self had to offer, here is my fanfiction.net bio, which has been left untouched and unchecked. Watch me burst into colorful flames. Okay, good. That's good. You can call me colors if you like. I'm I'm just a lonely I, I can't do it. I'm just a lonely 14-year-old girl that seriously can't seem to make friends. Ugh. My everyday emotions might be displayed in the stories I write. So the more you read them, maybe the more you can understand life for me too. I come from a great nation. The Hitali of patriotism really shining through. <laughs> With 33 provinces. There's 34 now, actually. And more than 17,000 islands. My stories aren't perfect, and I'm still learning to write. Hopefully one day, I can write as good as Suzanne Collins. Yeah, we'll have to see. I don't update very often, as my school hands out a lot of work, some of which you might find odd or irrational. <laughs> ah, please stop this Onision clone. I get good grades, most become top scores. <laughs> oh, children, why do they do this? And study hard in every subject. I do take pride in that. And also, I'm an artist, so I need to update my drawings too on DeviantArt, which I have deleted, which is the best decision I made. Aside from that comes my weekly workout to please my parents. <laughs> Take of that what you will. 
Let's not forget my German course, which I only took for, what, like one month, by the way. <laughs> I don't have a social life with best friends and boyfriends. It's okay, you never will. <laughs> so the free time from that is probably a good bonus for, for me, right? I'm so glad this is towards the end already. <sighs> oh, shoot. I, I remember I do have one friend. The Cambodia tree in front of my classroom. At first, it was dead, lifeless, no leaves, no flowers, just a branch protruding from the dried, cracked ground. Oh my, it gets worse. I found similarity in that tree with myself. <laughs> no, please, someone, someone do something. And so I nurtured it back to life. Now it is green, big, and blossoms beautiful yellow Cambodia flowers. A contrast, since every other Cambodia tree in school has pink ones. And that's probably all there is to know about this young amateurish author. I hope you enjoy my stories as much as I enjoy writing them. Wilujeng sumping to my profile. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like Onision and I'm not okay with that. <laughs> Help me! You have been warned. Hello everyone. <laughs> this is Kelly Mara here and today I'm joined by my amazing super talented voice actors for Wild Word who will be entertaining my strange delusions today. So if you guys want to oh, If you guys want to introduce yourselves I'm Jake Webas. I'm usually the voice of Marcus, and I'll be voicing Sandy. Hi. Awesome. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ken Koi. I usually voice Actress for the Project Wild Word, but today I'll be voicing Tutiana. Uh, I'm Nick. I usually voice Carter in Wild Word, but today I'm voicing the Easter Bunny and Pitch. A bienvenue, Power Bottoms. Uh, my name is Fia, and usually I play Fel Noir in Wild Word, but today I will be providing extras. Hi, I'm Skeletor301, and I normally play Elias Wright in Wild Word, but today I'm going to be doing uh, Jack and North. And I could also do weird amount of noises. So yeah, we've got a very overqualified <laughs> team to voice this very uh, <laughs> terrible fanfiction. Um, but yeah. You flatter us. I think you mean no, 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 Do you want to introduce the, 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 how we came to this idea? <laughs> um, okay, so it all started when my, <laughs> this is a very convoluted story, but it all started when my friend who I met up with for an anime con was like, hey, do you remember Jelsa? And I'm like, huh, do I remember Jelsa? And we just started raving about Jack and Elsa. Okay, because I was part of the rise of the Tangled Brave Frozen Dragons fandom back in the day. And um, <laughs> our brethren <laughs> rise up. <laughs> My friend sent me, a, sent me a Jelsa fanfiction, which of course I finished in a day, even though it was, <laughs> it was like, uh, like 20 chapters, 50 chapters. I don't even remember. I, I consumed it all. The commitment. I consumed it all in a day and a half. And then I'm like, I have to find more Yo, of these. Link me. Yo, I, link me later. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. And because <laughs> I was reading Jelsa fanfiction, my sister noticed and was like, hey, didn't you have that one Rise of the Guardians fanfiction? And I'm like, oh my god, oh. I do. Ooh, she called you out. She did. <laughs> So I, it I didn't even start with the fan fiction. I just like oddly remembered that I I had an OC for this. So I I looked up the picture of the OC, and then in the description of the drawing, which I posted on like a random Pokemon roleplay website, <laughs> in the description I was like, "This is my the OC. What? This nah, let's not talk about it. This is my OC." <laughs> Her name is Daydream, and I made her for my fanfiction. Here it is, and I posted the link. <laughs> Kelly Mara is just becoming more and more interesting by the longer she talks. <laughs> Kelly Mara lore. The lore. You can hear the, the, the like the blush on her in her, in her voice. 
<laughs> I must have just jumped through up. five. With you. Yeah, I must have jumped through five different fandoms just in that spiel alone. <laughs> and <laughs> and I ended up back on fanfiction.net staring at this fanfiction I wrote. And like um so th- this is what you're seeing on the screen right now. This is the fanfiction. Um that was my username and I couldn't log in. At first, because I really, really didn't remember my login credentials. I couldn't remember which email I was using. I know the password because I used that password for every one of my accounts when I was like a kid. But I couldn't remember the email because it was a, a, a Yahoo email. Like, I don't even remember uh. that I had a Yahoo email. And oh, wow. So this is, I'm not just making fun of some random kid on the internet. This, this random kid was me. Okay, so it's okay. <laughs> I mean, I would have supported the you. The random anyway. kid is in all of us. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, so um, let's start with the the summary. Um, <laughs> previously, Fields of Hope. The two. Oh, what's it called? It it's it's called Rise of the Guardians. I think, grayscale. That's the current. I think, I think, I think Jay should read that. Jay, <laughs> yeah, Jay do like a, okay. an epic intro. Previously fields of hope. The true damnation in life is getting what you want. Once you have it, what's left? Two things can happen. Either you lose your way, or you simply want something more. As Daydream, the spirit of imagination and fantasy, I've experienced both. If only I knew how dangerous wanting was. I just had a mental breakdown. That's my first one today. Jack X O C O C's POV. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Rise of the Guardians. Grayscale. Uh, Grayscale. I'm glad that I put down friendship. By colors of fire. fire. Yay! Okay, so friendship. it's 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 a uh, friendship fantasy. Even though there's implied romance, but I never got that far. It's twenty seven thousand three hundred words with nine chapters and forty three reviews. This is like my most reviewed work on this account, and I was so proud of it. I felt like, oh my god, this is gonna be huge. Like this is my this is my first serious project was this fan fiction, and as you can see, it's published like December seventh, twenty twelve. And then last updated December 15th, 2015. So I have gone back when I was like 16 because I, I suddenly remembered it. And I tried to like edit some things. I changed it. It was initially like third person. But then in 2015, I read The Hunger Games and was so inspired that I was like, yes, this has to be in first person now. So now it's in first person. But I did a very poor job of like, transitioning from third person to first person while editing so there's just random parts where you'll see that it's it's still written in third person it's gonna be really interesting <clears throat> so the struggle is real on with the, on with the author's note author's note holy cow i ended up dying for a millennium there anyhow Hello to all the new and faithful old readers. I'm finally amending the story to make it all pleasant-like and up to my current standards, which weren't very high. (laughs) (laughs) If you've read this story before, you'll be quite surprised because this story will now be told through daydreams, my OC, POV, so you guys can better understand her turmoil, her turmoil, turmoil, and spoiler alert, mental detour, the... Mental deterioration. <laughs> End spoiler. Undergone serious change. What? What? How is that connecting to the other one? Um, I finally added her clothing description too, which I'm sure wow. you're dying to know about. <laughs> extra, oh, extra. I love that. <laughs> I've just modified Daisy's backstory and added her real name. So happy reading. Yay! The Daisy, way- who are you wearing? The way my stomach just sank. <laughs> it's okay. Just, just take you stride. got this. Take you can persevere. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Don't don't shun don't shun thirteen year old Callie away. Embrace her. Is a part of you. I have to return to the mindset I was in. 
<laughs> if you need to tap you out to her, we all like, can, can be 13-year-old Pally, it off. let us know. Yeah, uh, okay, good idea, good Return idea. Turn yes. from whence you just <laughs> choose who, who, who is going to be the victim to read. Okay, I'm like t in tears right now. <laughs> <laughs> you got this, we believe you in you. This. You got this, Callie. There's no way you could fuck this up. Yeah. <laughs> Any worse than I have already, yeah. <laughs> than it was originally. I remember I was different. By the age of 16, I didn't dream what other young women dreamed. I didn't desire what they did. Ever since I met that Italian inventor, I wanted to invent too. I wanted to learn. But for a woman born in the dark ages, that simply did not work. But my intellect had always been beyond my years. I dare say it challenged that of the well-educated nobles, if not surpassing it. I know, because I once got myself involved in a debate with them on whether or not duck quacks echo. They do. <laughs> mm. I declined many nobles' requests for my hand in marriage, for I did not desire a husband, lovely children, or a comfortable house. I wanted to explore ideas, innovate, and pursue knowledge much like the inventor I'd met. But alas, in medieval France, this is nothing to be proud of. I became an outcast, bringing great scorn to me and my dirt-poor family. And that was when everything changed. I vividly remember their mental abuse, telling me how abnormal I am, what, is <laughs> what a disappointment I am, and how unfortunate they were to have me as an only child. I remember feeling lower than dirt, trying desperately to convince them that I could turn things around with my ideas and creations, but they never listened. As I got older, I learned to replace my emotions with logic, where I plucked the wisdom from their words and let the hurtful accusations pass from one ear and out the other, and my imagination became vivid pictures of a world I wanted to escape to. It was the only way I could survive. My mind matured faster than my body did. I remember I liked being outside, wandering out to the forest on my own, climbing trees, dipping my toes in the water. I loved it all very much. I especially enjoyed the silence, nothing but the babbling brook and the leaves rustling in the wind. All those things. I was very good at that too, separating myself from the world. It didn't make me happy, but then again, I was never happy. I was broken. Sometimes I wished desperately for the world I dreamed of. The dream Sandman made for me when I could still sleep. You must be wondering, by now, who I am. Well, I'll start with the day I was born. The day my wish came true. Okay, someone needs to tap it because I'm about to- I'll tap in! I'm about to have a conniption! <laughs> <laughs> I will- I volunteer! Okay. <clears throat> At the age of 18, I remember walking to my secret spot in the forest. When I heard someone crying, I felt curious that someone occupied my place. I never had anyone who cared enough to follow me around. I decided I would find that person. What I found, though, surprised me. A broken wooden sleigh crashed on a rock dangerously close to a landslide crack, and a little boy hanging on the ledge of the other side. <clears throat> sleigh accident. Panicking, I kicked my walk to a sprint as I neared the crack, skidding from my knees to my stomach as I made a stop at ledge. I knew I had to save him. The memory would haunt me forever if I didn't. But how could I? He was on the other side of the cliff, the other side of the opposite ledge. <clears throat> how could I reach him? Hey! The boy whimpers and soon rigidly turns his head. Help me! He yelps body trembling, hand slipping. I'll try. Just, just hold on. I'll, I'll try and figure something out. I sounded pathetic and probably I was sure I annoyed him instead of soothing him. But that didn't matter. At least not at that time. I began to look around frantically, telling him to keep composure. I wouldn't want to be stamped as the cause of his death. I remember seeing a tree with its branch stretching to the other side of the ledge, the overgrown black crack. And I remembered hastily, I scaling it, inching myself to the branch and scooting over as far as I could to its maximum length before jumping, taking a tumble to the ground. 
I remember my shoulder aching and my knees throbbing. But I crawl anyway. On all fours to the boy. And I grabbed his cold, stiff hand. And then I pulled. Up until that point, I realized I never estimated on how heavy the boy could be. And now I was paying for it. His weight was pulling mine quickly that I was to his. That would ultimately mean we both would be swallowed by the darkness of the crack. I staggered to my feet for a better grip. But of course, the ground was not helping either. Slick was newly formed frost and slippery with mud on some parts. The boy was slipping, but then so was I. It lasted a few moments, that teetering between life and death. I stare into the little boy's eyes, white as they were, full of fear. I cracked a smile and quietly slipped in some words of comfort before it all went wrong. Hey kid, I got an idea. Let's pretend you're a small bird getting ready to flight. I remember the confusion on his face, and I smiled her, though I slowly feel my grip on him slipping and the ground disappearing. Don't worry, it helps. All you gotta do is close your eyes and leave the rest to your imagination, your fantasy. Pretend you're somewhere else, anywhere else, but here. I watch him slowly close his eyes. Yeah, that's it. You feel the sun on your wings, the wind. You concentrate. My eyes start back and forth as we continue to slip, and yet he smiled, and I had to swallow hard. You spread your wings, and then, and then that was it. My boots had betrayed me, and we both slipped. I caught a small moment, a moment where my boots were just about to lose all footing, and I use it to my advantage. You fly! That was too good for this fanfiction. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. On the edge of my feet. <laughs> the excitement. Yes, yes. Fly. With all my strength, I pulled that boy up and tossed him overhead, sending him into the air, but alas, sending my feet plummeting down the slope of the mud and frost. Down inside the crack. I hadn't even screamed. I was too choked to. I recall the sensation of falling and everything moving in a blurring haze. The bright autumn skies became a faint white line in contrast to the dark crack ledges. And even that was blurred. I remember my stomach churned, turned, and did backflips. And then I remembered a sudden halt, as well as the sickening sound of a skull cracking into the tiny little pieces. I recall ringing in my ears as my eyes went far from focused, everything too blurred to make out, and my mind too scrambled to even try. So I watched the sky as the clouds cleared, and I suddenly see a round, orb-like object in it, shining faintly. And then I remember I closed my eyes, and the world became dark. It felt like centuries had passed, melting away in deep slumber, until finally, the orb-like object came back, and I finally understand that that was the moon. He lit the darkness with light, beckoning colors and life back into me, and I remember being lifted, coming toward the moon, and I remember him telling me, Welcome back. And the next thing I knew, I was breathing again. Okay, my name is Di- Di- Dida- Dida Rime. Dida Rime? I'll, I'll, I'll take Adrian. it from here. Okay. My name is Deida Reem, better known as Daydream, the spirit of imagination and fantasy. <laughs> Let me explain to you my job is to create a world for children and adults alike, a world only they see and believe in, their fantasy, their imagination, a place that allows them to have everything they want, create and explore ideas as far as they could, possible or impossible, real or imaginary. I fill their heads with ideas no matter how silly, because the way I saw it, that is how brilliance begins. Of course, these fantasies became crucial to human innovation, and also a source of hope. Yes, hope. The thing that turns into a belief. For the first few years of my new life, I explored the world. 
As new spirits were raised, I would weave their stories into the imaginations of every person I come across. The day Santa dropped off his first gift, I filled the children's heads with his image and who he was. When the tooth fairy left her first quarter, I directed imagination to her existence. The day Bunnymund hid his first egg, I showed his presence in the children's thoughts. It was the same for the Sandman, who's been here before any of us were. The list goes on. Then there was Jack Frost, a hard one to crack. I'd only been able to imprint his name, and eventually children grew up, became parents, and shared of the name Jack Frost to their own children. His name went down to generations, but nobody really knew he was real. That was because only a name was imprinted. His name wasn't even a name after a few generations, just a metaphor, something bodiless. So I suppose it was partially my fault Jack Frost was invisible to the children. But of course, there's always the issue of identity Jack had always struggled with. He didn't know what he should be doing in the first place, so I couldn't really create an image for him with the children. It's the same for other spirits. Can't do a thing unless they knew who they were. So yes, I could just probably storm into a clueless spirit's quarters and demand they do this, do that, make it quick instead of them having to go around in circles, but I can't. Because, unlike most spirits, I don't need to be believed in. I don't rely on belief, I simply rely on open minds of children and some adults who retain their child's state of mind. I create belief, or at least I build them, which is the reason why I am forever invisible to everyone, even to other spirits. But I suppose that's what happens when no one believes in you, not even other spirits, except Sandman. Why? I suppose it was because the man in the moon pitied me enough to spare me from a life of solitude, or because both he and I work with children's minds. Only difference was, he works during the night, I work in the day and before they doze off, while they're still awake. So all those intrusive thoughts you have, they're her fault. But what difference does that make really? I was still alone. Only this time, I'm not lonely. I was finally left alone left to do as I please, and when I'm tired of that, I talk to Sandy. Sort of. And he never speaks of me with anyone, not that he could. I was living the dream. I had the entire world to myself. No one to bother me and no one to please. And I could do the very thing that I loved most. Daydream. But after centuries and centuries of daydreaming, you realize why we're not created to be alone. Days become weeks and weeks become months, then the months form years, on and on until I tire of counting. There is a feeling you that start to develop when the only comfort you receive is from the mind. Hollowness, gnawing merciless hollowness, a desperation, a plea, a skin crawling kind of emptiness. It was, in a sense, starvation, though I did not need food. And even through all that time, I remain young, juvenile. My pale skin never shrivels or wrinkles or sags <laughs> or dries. My hair never falls out, nor does it ever grow, preserved, like a corpse in a hospital ward. And now I sit on a rooftop, kicking my legs as I stare into the sky, my lithe body remaining out of Father Time's touch, slim and tall. I am daydream, and I am doing my job sending off different fantasies all over the world through my mind. Yet concentration doesn't show on my freckled face. Instead, it takes a form of blankness that most would decipher as dazing off, because that was what Sandy calls me anyway. Daze. My attention seems glued to the black tights that wrap around my legs, ending with a pair of white ballerina slippers. My mother liked putting me in corsets, and a corset is now part of my top which is an indigo and white shirt with strings lacing the front part. This is such a Wattpot description of clothing! <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I need, I just need to say that this is as far as I read when you initially linked this, because I was like, okay, it's getting too good. I need to wait until the recording. <laughs> <This> is... Yes. <laughs> uh, I tried Yeah, no, this is really it's good. I'm getting so, like, so overly descriptive. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. 
Listen, OC we outfits are important, them. okay? You they wouldn't are. understand. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, like, this is a look. And, and you know what? <laughs> I was... English was not my first language, so I'm just gonna give, like, little little me a, a pat on the back for A for effort on that. I'm giving little Callie an A plus for style, because, again, <laughs> serving. Yes, when please, come. continue the Mary soon. Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I need to know more about this outfit. The sleeves are short, and the hem shows my collarbones. I have gray leather straps wrapped around my forearm, hands, and legs. They resemble bandages, and they flow each time I weave. Although, if you look closely enough in my gray eyes, you can see flashes of color flying here and there, the fantasies being sent off, and you would notice how my fingers twitch. How my fingernails glow, weaving fantasies and sending them off in streaks of bright colors for the others to receive. Possibly in the middle of distress, needing a calming down, an escape to their world. The world they handcrafted themselves with my slight aid. It was a long while before I snap out of my mind work, eyes drifting up to a small man draped in a golden robe riding on a golden dust cloud that floats towards me. Tentacles of dream strings spreading out into every house in the dark neighborhood, and possibly the entire side of the world that is currently asleep. I work on the rest of the population, the ones wide awake. He gives a small wave. I finally lift my head, face full of hair, thick black as the night and slick as the frost I slipped on, short like how long a daydream lasts, and styled into a bob that nearly touches my shoulders. Messy. Strands sticking out, framing my face. The bangs hang over my eyes, concealing what little emotion I have left. But, unable to really see Sandy, I stop the finger twitching in my right hand and run it under my bangs, sweeping it back to my scalp and putting the strands back in place, out of my face. Immediately, I resume my finger twitching, but my gaze remained fixed on the golden man. Sandy takes a seat next to me, and his golden cloud disappearing in a poof. Something on your mind? He doesn't need to conjure things above his head to talk to me. I can hear his thoughts, just as I see as I seize the minds of the children before deciding what to put in them. But then again, Sandy's thoughts had always been loud. You just needed to be real quiet to hear it, which is why his fellow guardians never hear him, and why he resorts to conjuring images above his head. How long has it been? I ask, my voice resonating as a slur. It always sounded that way. How long has what been? Sandy turns his gaze to me and tilts his head curiously, creating the soft chime of jingling bells. I look back at him and my brows knit together in thought. My existence. How long has it been? The golden man stops for a moment. He also seems to think but a smile stretches across his face. <laughs> Why? Did you forget your birthday? His words were meant to be a joke, and he even grins to emphasize it, but I don't see it that way. Not funny. Mostly because it was true. I have long forgotten my birthday, for what was the point? I'll only live forever and ever. Why count the number of sand that falls from the upper half of an hourglass? However, this was beside the point. I furrow my brows even more, trying to choose the right words in my head. Somewhere along the way, I've apparently lost the ability to communicate at all. I don't know. I just feel like I've been dead for a thousand years instead of being alive. Is it because I barely exist? Sandy once again thought. Could be. Everyone needs attention too sometimes. A confused look from me forced him to explain some more. You know, to be acknowledged. Everyone? Everyone. Then why was I made this way? Unseen. The Sandman falls into silence. Deep down, I knew that he thought the answer was obvious as the nose upon my face. So why bother asking? I am the person who initiates relief through the fantasies I cast in people's minds. As long as humans had thoughts and ideas, I would live. And even though one of my jobs were to create images of spirits to the children, I can't conjure a thing for myself. I have no one to believe in me. Although, 
I wonder why his thoughts seemed so jumbled. But what other reason was there? The first time we met, he greeted me the way he greeted any other spirit, until he tried to shake hands with me. His hand went right through mine, and I wasn't too surprised. He must have noticed the sullen look on my face that day, clearly showing how it wasn't the first time that's happened. After explaining why this was, I asked him why he could see me. As usual, his mind goes on first. The thought he formed in his head was, because I remember you. And it only left me more confused than I already was. He covered up his thoughts and began dishing out other excuses, but I don't remember what they were. I was too preoccupied on what he'd thought earlier. He remembers me? I concluded that he was the first spirit to live. He was the master of all dreams and vision. I knew he occasionally gave humans premonition dreams, showing future events. He could have simply seen this event himself, but still, I can't shake the feeling that he's hiding something from me. Or perhaps he was just being polite. I... I don't know why. I'm sorry. Despite the hundred things I want to ask him, specifically what it what it is he's attempting to hide from me, I only hang my head, allowing my bothersome bangs to sweep across my eyes. And again, I find myself pouring my thoughts to him. I've always craved to live like this in the past, but now it's becoming so painful. And I know why, but why can't I admit it? And literally nobody knew my pride better than Sandy. Everybody always needs to meet new people, make new friends. From the grin he cracks, I could already tell he had a plan. How about you come with me to the North Pole tomorrow? I'll be heading to Bunny Month's Warren after that, and then straight to the Tooth Palace. It'd be great for raising your spirits again. I wonder why I'm so surprised at this offer. I practically asked for it the moment I opened my app about my overall dissatisfaction on life. Yet I still flinch, and I still cringe. But is that allowed? Stall days. Stall. Sandy makes an amused laugh that is ultimately mute. <laughs> well, no, actually. But I'm sure no one will even notice you're there. I crack a smile. A dry, sardonic smile. The irony was hurtful, and I now have a thousand reasons as to why it was a terrible idea. For me. Obviously. But again, I decide to be stupid. Sure. Why not? And the sparkling, golden man nods his head. Meet me here again tomorrow. Ah, okay, that's chapter Yay! one! <laughs> I have questions. So good. I have Ooh. questions. <laughs> More importantly, yes. how is it that you're one of the oldest spirits, but you were in medieval France, but older than Santa Claus? And <laughs> I don't know, okay? <laughs> the, 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 here's the thing. This is why love ruins everything. <laughs> because I wanted to pair, I wanted to pair, like, Ada, Daydream, with Jack Frost. And in my childhood, I was like... Oh, they have to be roughly the same age. So I put her as like being in the dark ages, even though it completely like throws off the timelines as to what she I was, love <laughs> as to what her purpose yeah, was and like the lore behind the character. I just threw it out the window because no, no, she's going to be with Jack Frost. So they need to be the same age. Obviously, you can only be 13 if you're in medieval France. Ah, yes. Exactly. That's the only way it will work. I love how even <laughs> even back when back in those days you still had this fixation with France. It's I mean, weird, we all watch not? Beauty and the Beast. We all know how that there. works. Dang. It's strange. What? Who's who's the Italian inventor? I, I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's Super <laughs> Mario. I think I was I was trying Dark to Dark Ages Let Mario. <laughs> I think what oh was my I, god oh, was I like was I I think I was alluding to Leonardo da Vinci but like the timelines completely oh. did not line up at all how would she this meet him like, here's the renaissance exactly little Kelly yeah. Kim, math. exactly like well, okay. I, I was like <laughs> initially I remember like my idea was that days started the renaissance like her rise 
resulted in the Renaissance. But then she met Leonardo da Vinci when she was alive. So like, uh-huh. it, it doesn't no, make well, any you sense. Single-handedly oh, that's perfectly began fine. The Renaissance. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> fuck go. time. This, this, this will work. I don't care how. How long had you been? How long have you known mm-hmm. like English by the time you were thirteen? I th- I don't know. I watch like a lot of American TV, and mm. like mm. my aunt, she studied abroad as well, and she had like this um, boyfriend who was from Austria, and he came like to visit us one day with her, <laughs> and then I just like came up to him and was like, "Hello, Mister, what's your name?" And like everyone was shocked because they didn't even know I could speak <laughs> English. <laughs> Hello, little girl. It's been very nice to meet you. You have a very good. Uh, you have very good uh, manners. Yes. You speak very good. You speak very good English. You speak better English than I do. I love that Jorgenhan strangle voice you put on there. It was meant to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, oops. Oops. Never mind. Oopsies. Um, you got to be, get the fairies. The fairies. <laughs> Come on. We got to go get the fairies. Pick up those cookies. Let's go. <laughs> Come on! Oh, Why doesn't Santa this speak like this, this instead? Is this, is this, is this Arnold Schwarzenegger as, as Santa? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm Merry Christmas. Christmas. Arnold Schwarzenegger, I got my double arms now, Santa. Oh. I just go. Yeah, A hard left oh. turn. Merry Christmas. Oh. 